All right, welcome to part two of this series of tutorials that just focuses on uh, reusing existing assets to make newer ones. This is very useful for uh, making your own custom game modes uh, and having unique looking assets that aren't just uh, differently dressed up heroes. This is a similar technique to what they did for Siltbreaker, where they would build new characters out of existing assets provided by the workshop and um, Valve's existing library of assets. So we've got Bob, our little test subject here. He's a yellow version of Jeremy Kahn, who was just a blue version of Axe with a different head. Uh, so we're in our model viewer. We can see him. We see he has a skeleton, but no animations. Now, if you click the animation tab, there's an add animation option. That's important because that's what we're mostly going to be using for adding all of our existing animations. Now, I could just add all of the ones I made for Jeremy so far, but that wouldn't teach you anything. What I am going to do is I'm going to teach you how to do that using Blender, our fantastic multi-purpose 3D modeling software. So uh, where are we going to get these animations? Well, he is a remodel of Axe, effectively. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to our asset browser. We're going to go type in Axe. And we're going to find Axe's model. Here you can see all of Axe's dif different equipment. Some uh, some existing assets and some unused assets. There are a few items in here that aren't actually in the game. But uh, I'll leave you to uh, data mine that stuff for yourself and look at all that cool stuff. So here's Axe. You click on him, you see little animations. We can't get anything from this, but what we can is we can get stuff from Source Filmmaker. So we're going to create a new Source Filmmaker session. That'll create. And we don't actually need to load in a map. I was I, I'm like, I always used to load in the default map, but you don't actually need to load in anything. So I'm just going to Alt-Tab to here, click and drag on Axe, Alt-Tab again, and drag him into this. So now we have Axe loaded. So what we're going to do, what you would typically do before rigging your model is export this, uh, the bind animation the same way I did in a previous tutorial. However, I'm going to do the same thing again to go over actual animation. So what I'm going to do is import a sequence. So what's a good sequence to clean up? Let's, uh, hmm. let's do... Let's simply do the idle animation. So we're going to import that sequence. And then we're going to go to, and we're going to right click this little uh, thing here again. We're going to export animation. And we're going to save this to the Jeremy folder. And I'm just going to call this tutorial cycle animation because that's what this is all about. Because all of these animations that I've already exported, I have exported from Axe and had to clean them up individually to make sure it is a single cycle that uh, is properly oriented. So save that. And then we can close Source Filmmaker. Go without saving. I'm gonna backspace Axe and go back to Bob. Here's Bob. He has no animations. Uh, he doesn't even have a bind pose loaded. That's just his default pose. So we're going to go back to Blender. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a source engine. You should have this installed beforehand. Uh, and we're going to find our tutorial cycle animation cleanup that we, that we exported. We're going to import that. And so He's been uh, he's sort of been like shifted backward a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select all, rotate on the x-axis by 90. We're not actually going to clear anything or reapply any transforms. This is completely temporary. So we're going to hide that x. And if we click on this, whoo boy, look at all those ticks that just showed up in the animation bar in the timeline. Uh, we're going to go to the dope sheet editor. And as you can see, this is not, this is not a good animation to export to, uh, <laughs> to source. This is where, this is where a lot of people have problems with this particular, um, 
with this particular method. This is a huge mess of individual keyframes. The animation file itself is huge because of this. So as a result, uh, I'm going to select a big chunk of these and just delete those because the cycle ends somewhere over here. I'm just deleting the big mass of bulk uh, of these keyframes just to stop Blender from slowing down. All right. So first things first, we want to start on one, not frame zero, frame one. Okay. Now we want to figure out where the next frame that this animation, uh, what frame this animation loops on. And then that way we can clear all the frames before it and all the frames after it. And so it's just one cycle. Every single animation in Dota 2 is cyclical. Well, with the exception of, I guess, deaths. Uh, death animations shouldn't loop. However, um, uh, like your attack animations, your uh, running animations, your idle animations should all loop relatively seamlessly, more or less. So we want to start on frame one. So every single frame that starts before frame one, from uh, frame minus 40, 30 something to frame zero, get rid of those. We don't need them. Now we're going to sort of scrub forward until we find something that looks very similar to our first pose. Oh, here's another thing. Luckily, this animation has a frame jitter. This is just a simple error that sometime, you sometimes see from exports. We're going to clean that up as well. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, you see that frame jitter doesn't exist further down the line. If you wanted to, you could select a perfect cycle from up here and slide it back down. But we're actually going to clean up the first one. So if I were to animate this as is now, you'd be able to see that little jitter. So uh, let's see. What does frame 24 look like? Nothing like that. Forty-four and frame one. Okay, so I think the loop point is around the forties. See, this is this is where you this is where a lot of the improvisation comes in. You need to like figure this stuff out on the fly. So forty three. Okay, let's send the let's set the end to forty nine for now and just see what it looks like. Oh, close. That's actually really close. Try fifty. You see that little, that little pause there when that hand comes up. I'm using this hand, his uh, his right hand right now to mark where the loop is. Let's try 48. Ooh, I think that's where it is. So first things first, it's really difficult to see how this loops with this jitter. So I'm going to keep that end frame at 48, and we're going to find those jitters. So let's keep going along here. So this is fine. Right here. This is where there's a big fuck up happening. So we're going to. So we're just going to select these individual bones. It's likely the root. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this root frame, and delete it. Actually, let's go to the graph editor, see what we can find on this particular frame. So right here, all of these more or less go straight, but for some reason, The root curves twitch for some strange reason right here. Hmm. All right. Uh, so deleting that doesn't seem to work. It felt like it worked beforehand. Yeah, well, in any case, we're just gonna—we're actually just gonna go with Plan B and just offset this. So instead, uh, the start is now going to be at 48. 
uh, I'm just going to do a quick little math here. Uh, so 48. So start on frame one. So this is a 48 frame cycle or 49. Uh, what I'm going to do is, sorry, I'm bad at math. 48 plus 48 equals 96. So we're going to go from frame 48 end on frame 96. Okay, yeah, that's a much cleaner loop. Okay, you can see that little bump there where it, where it stops. So let's try for 95 instead of 96. There we go. There's our perfect loop. So from frame 48 to 96 is a perfect idle loop, and that's what we're going to export. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to go to the last frame in the animation, which is 48. And I'm going to select every frame before it. Zoom in to make sure you're not selecting the frame itself. Yeah, 47. Delete. Then we're going to go to the last frame in the animation, which is 95. Right here. I'm going to select these couple frames that are right after it. Delete those. Zoom out to get the rest of them. Oh, that's a lot. Select all those. Delete them. And there we go. There's our individually uh, cut out perfectly looping idle animation. It is a little jittery, but uh, I mean, you could make a custom idle animation yourself, but uh, this is more or less perfect for what we need. Like zoomed out, it looks just fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drag this down back to frame one, just to make sure that it's all nice and simplified. So. Hit frame one, and it ends on frame 48. So start one, end 48. And there we go. So now that that is all cleaned up, let's go back to object mode and select all, uh, select the, um, select the skeleton, and we're gonna export that as an FBX. So export. FBX animation, uh, it should just be, you should just have baked animation ticked. And we're gonna call this, uh, oh yeah, go back to main. Yeah, make sure you've got your scale set and it's just to selected objects. And we're going to export this. You could export it to your own animations folder like I have, uh, but I'm just gonna export this as Bob underscore cleaned up. that yeah there we go if, if, if it take if it takes forever to export something you may have something uh, you may have your export settings checked incorrectly and it may be exporting everything in the scene uh, but you should just have the skeleton itself selected and nothing else so uh, go to my working folder where are you Bob cleaned up underscore dot idle I mean idle.fpx. I'm going to copy this, and we're going to take this to Bob's models folder. So we're going to back out from the materials folder to Bob, go to models, and here we have the fbx and the mdl. And we're just going to post the animations in here as well. So cleaned up idle.fbx. Now back to the model editor. So we're in our model editor for Bob. It's all good. We're going to click animation, and we click add animation. Now you see bob.fbx, this is the model file, and then there's bob cleaned up idle.fbx. This is what we want. We're gonna open that. Go to animations, we're gonna select that, and there you go. Now here you can choose the end frame. You can, I can see this little jitter at the end of that loop. We're gonna change the end frame to 48, so that way it loops a little smoother. Uh, there's another option called smooth loop. If you enable that, I think that should try to smooth it out. If I actually change the end frame to 49, that might work. Hmm. 47. Oh, change the start frame to one. Change the end frame to 48. Enable smooth loop. Hmm. 
This can sometimes take a bit of tweaking just to get it looped the way you want. Because sometimes source will just like automatically drop a frame. Or uh, Blender will automatically drop a frame for animation cycles. I can't quite remember. It's all a little finicky, but like these are various animation uh, settings that you can uh, alter. I don't actually fuss around with those. I just leave them as they are. Uh, but yeah, there you go. We have a working animation uh, for Bob now. And then you can export all sorts of different animations and clean them up. For, so you can export the run cycles. You can export the attack animations. Like just for uh, just for the sake of showing that, I'm going to uh, copy like this done run uh, like the attack animations. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste them into Bob's. Animations. These are clean to backs animations I did beforehand when working on Jeremy. And we're going to add some of those too, just to show you how you can swap between these. So let's add attack alt. Let's add run. Let that load. Uh, add stun. And add victory. So here we've got his cleaned up idle. We've got the attack. Now he's not really swinging anything. That looks a little weird. So I'm actually going to show you how you can add your axe back in there. So here he is, holding nothing. We're going to go to Tools. We're going to click to Bone Merge Tool. So this allows us to import items from other uh, item sets, other heroes if we wanted to, and add them to this. So there's Jeremy. There's Rothal. There's Ooze's models. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Let's find an axe weapon. So let's go to axe. Let's get something. Let's get something for Bob to wield. Let's give him a battle mallet. There we go. This is a. This is a. Uh, this was an unused item for axe. That probably wasn't added because it was a hammer instead of an axe. But uh, there. You know what? Bob gets a battle mallet. So because this is already rigged to axe a skeleton, which is the skeleton we're using, it's going to work with all of our animations. So I'll go to attack alt. There's him swinging that big old hammer. Now you can you can alter these an the exported animations if you want. I actually did alter this one by making his back arc back a little bit more than the default animation. So there's a little bit more of a there's a much huger arc into this swing than there uh, was on Axe's default attack animation. So run, give him a little run there. Stun. One thing I did to this is that I, uh, I swung uh, Axe's jaw a little uh, in this animation, so that passed over into this. So this is an edited animation, but only slightly. It's just adding a bit more movement to that jaw. And then victory. And that's it. That's all there is to it, to uh, importing pre-existing Dota 2 asset animations. And now you can apply these to your own custom heroes that end up reusing, I don't know, like whether it be Juggernauts or Ursa or Storm Spirits animations, whoever you want to import or export. Just, I hope this makes it much easier for people to uh, work on uh, their own custom assets for custom game modes and custom heroes and all that stuff. This is made. This was made mostly so other members of the custom hero project team can also do this uh, effectively. So yeah, I hope that uh, has helped. And I hope to see lots of cool custom uh, assets coming out of the modding community in the coming years. So yeah, hope this helps.